Hello friends, in today's video, I'm feeding a family of four dinner for a week for just over $42. It's almost Cinco de Mayo and I'm celebrating with an over-the-top menu filled with all the recipes my family loves. And I'll also be trying some new dishes like creamy cream cheese chicken taquitos. I'll also be making pulled barbecue chicken sandwiches. My menu includes all the extras, including cream cheese, cilantro, jalapeno, sour cream, lime, so you can take this budget if you want and cut it down even further. You can see what I make in this video and customize it for your own family. I'll have the ingredients list so you can copy and paste straight from the description area of my video, and I'll also include the recipes for you. Before I head to Walmart, I'm stopping by a Persian market where I'm able to get produce a lot cheaper. I'll only be picking up a few items. The majority of my shopping will be at Walmart. They had red onions for 79 cents a pound. I'm not sure how I'll use this in my menu, but I think I'll get a small one. I say this a lot on my channel, but it does bear repeating for newer viewers. If you live in a city, chances are you live near an ethnic market. I've been able to save so much money on produce by shopping at ethnic markets. I picked up a small red cabbage at the market I was just in, but if you wanted to, you could pick up a bag of the coleslaw. I would get the larger size for $1.98, but they were out of that when I was there. Or if you do have a Sam's Club membership, they have an excellent deal on coleslaw. They have a huge two pound bag for $1.98 and it lasts a really long time. I was gonna save some money by picking up a Greek plain yogurt for 67 cents instead of the sour cream, but they were out so I just got the sour cream. I noticed that my Walmart is now carrying the La Moderna spaghetti and it was 93 cents, which is actually 19 cents cheaper than the Great Value brand. I'm counting in the budget for this two pound bag of long grain Great Value rice. I buy rice in bulk, so I'll just take from there. And really the same thing goes for the black beans. You would be purchasing this bag right here. But again, I've got that at home, so I'll be taking from there. This week's menu does require some barbecue sauce, so you can either make it at home. It's super easy to do and only requires a few ingredients. Otherwise, you can pick up this Great Value Original for $1.56. If you have a little bit more money in your budget, I do recommend the Stubbs brand of barbecue sauce because it's made without high fructose corn syrup. I thought it would be fun to make some chimichangas this week. I'm thinking about making a really nice sauce for them, but I don't know if I want the medium-sized tortillas or the large. I'm thinking that the large will be just a little too big for me, but maybe that would be something you'd want. They, they both are the same price, so I think I'll just go ahead and go with the medium. If you're watching this and you're one of my viewers that's eating low carb, they have these great value flour tortillas that are six net carbs. I feel like it's never been easier to eat low carb. There's just so many products out there. I found that the highest rated products are usually the ones I like best. And here are the best sellers for the low carb and keto options. I went ahead and got the fresh chicken breast because number one, it's the same price. And second, I'm actually gonna be making all of these meals within just a couple of days in order to get this video out to you guys. But they have the frozen chicken as well. And I know that some of my viewers do purchase this. So that's always an option. Here is the grocery haul. I got the chicken for $14.68, I think. You could probably get that cheaper if you got it on sale. And I got about 80 of the tortillas, but I have this huge pack at home, so I just inserted that there. But you will have 80 if you follow this budget, and you purchase those at Walmart. I also got the buns, the barbecue sauce, the salsa, all the stuff I got. One pound of black beans, two pounds of rice. Those are fillers for meals, so if you want to add rice and beans to meals, you can. You have lots of options with those. All of this stuff here, again, I'll have 
the ingredients list for you in the description area of my video. For my first meal, I'm making barbecue chicken sandwiches with shredded chicken. I love using shredded meats in budget cooking because it really helps the meat to stretch further. And I'm excited to see how much I get out of two large chicken breasts. I'm going to be using my crock pot for most of my meals. I love making meat in it because it doesn't heat up my kitchen, so I plan to use this quite a bit this summer. I'm going to add a little bit of smoked paprika and garlic powder, and those are going to add a nice flavor to the chicken, and it's also going to make my house smell amazing. Sometimes I spray my crock pot before I add the chicken. Probably should have done that here, but I forgot, so I'm sure it'll be fine. I'll add a small amount of water just to make sure. Some chicken has more water in it than others, so it should release some liquid, but just to play it safe, I'll add just a little bit of water. I started this on low and then one of my sons was home and said how hungry he was, so I ended up turning it up to high but I'll leave some cooking instructions for you in the description area of my video. I need to make some coleslaw now to go with these pulled pork sandwiches. And I'm just cutting out the inside, which is the core. And I think I'm just going to use half, even though it's a really small purple cabbage. I know that when I slice this very finely, it's going to make a large amount. So I'm just going to Put the other cabbage aside for some other meals later and I'll see how far I can get out of just half of this. And I actually like to just take this cabbage and eat it raw. It is so good. I, I just love the flavor of this. Different recipes call for different vinegars, but you typically see either white vinegar or apple cider vinegar, but really anything that you have is going to work here. Apple cider and white vinegar smell completely different. I found a recipe that uses both, but I thought I would taste this after adding in the white vinegar and see how I like it. I realized last week when I was making that curry that sometimes it's a good idea to taste something after each new ingredient. I always forget that. Whether that be a spice or vinegar, it's really the only way to learn the flavors of the spices. So frequently, we just follow a recipe and put it in the ingredients, not really knowing what the exact flavor of each ingredient is. I feel like it's kind of the same thing as when you put the directions into your navigation to get somewhere, but then you forgot how you got there. And then you're like, I've literally come to this place five times, but yet I still don't know how to get there without the navigation. I feel like it's the same thing with spices. I've used a lot of spices that I have no idea what they taste like. I felt like it needed more vinegar, so I added the apple cider vinegar. And you saw me adding celery seed. That is the quintessential spice that goes into coleslaw. However, there are a lot of recipes that don't use it. So if you don't have it, don't worry about it. Just make it without it. I'll be using this everything but the elote seasoning from Trader Joe's. You could do just one ear of corn per person, but if you have kids, you might want to cut these in half and then they each get a half. In that case, you might be able to use the corn from one ear to make a black bean and corn salad or mix in with a small thing of pasta and black beans and corn, or maybe you would want to use all of the corn that way. I'm just trying to give you some options of other things that you can do with these ingredients besides the choices that I made. Anyhow, I'm just going to boil these and then top them with butter and the elote seasoning. And if you don't have those ingredients, that's fine. This will taste great on their own. 
I thought I'd make a vegetarian version of this sandwich for myself. If you have a family member that's a vegetarian or vegan, you can always purchase less chicken and pick up one of these bags of plant-based chicken patties. I always baste these with either butter or oil and then pop them in the toaster oven so they become a nice golden brown color. I also let my chicken patty crisp up in the toaster oven and then I just topped it with some barbecue sauce and I used the coleslaw to top the bun with. This was delicious. I love the barbecue flavor against that creamy coleslaw, and I love the crunch from the cabbage. I'm not sure why I don't make coleslaw more often. It's delicious. The chicken smells amazing, and it's done. It's ready to shred. You want to make sure you don't overcook the chicken. It's not like pork where it becomes more tender the longer you cook it. It'll get tough if you overcook it. So either use a thermometer or you can cut it in half and check the center. Fully cooked chicken will look white with clear juices. It doesn't look pink at all. This was a huge hit in my family. Everyone loved this meal. I ended up with a lot more chicken than I thought I was going to off of just those two large breasts. It's amazing how much it makes when you shred it. When I stacked each sandwich, I wanted to have equal amounts of chicken with the coleslaw. Doing it like this, I would have been able to top about 10 of these buns. So you can either have this for one meal or possibly even two. I thought this would have been great with either some pickles or pickled onions. I had an onion in this haul and it would have been easy to make these the night before. I'll put a link to the video for you where I did this, but it's super easy. You just need vinegar, sugar, and water to do it. You could also pickle cabbage. I was thinking for vegans that didn't want to have coleslaw, you could either use a vegan mayonnaise, of course, or you could just pickle the coleslaw. That might be a fun option here. For these tacos, you'll need to make some black beans. I'll be using canned ones to save time, but they'll both taste the same. I'm also using a little of the cabbage, cilantro, jalapenos, and green onions. I'm going to make a chipotle sour cream sauce for these tacos. If you don't have this Tabasco chipotle sauce, there are lots of options for you. You can add a tablespoon of the salsa just to the sour cream. That would be good. Or you can add either paprika or chipotle pepper. Or lastly, you could add in some taco seasoning. I'm actually going to go ahead and try this taco seasoning first and see how I like that. Wow, that is really good actually. I could eat this just like that without adding anything to it. That is very good. If you've never tried that before, definitely want to try that. You guys, this chipotle sauce tastes amazing. Oh my gosh, this is going to make my tacos taste so good.
Tacos are one of my favorite foods and they can be made so many different ways. I think I probably should have added more black beans in this taco. It does look a bit thin. I love the flavor of this sauce. It goes so well against the black beans. It has just a hint of that chipotle smokiness but yet it's still creamy. I also made myself a low carb taco with the cabbage leaves and it was also very good. Obviously you could put the barbecue chicken in there, but red cabbage leaves are one of my favorite ways to eat low carb tacos. I'm definitely gonna be making that sauce again. Okay friends, should we lean into the purple or should we go with this yellow? I'm opting for the purple. Actually, I like the way it matches the cabbage. Okay, I wanna talk about the tomato section at Walmart because I did make a discovery there I was thinking about making my own salsa and I thought I could use Rotel or a similar great value brand product. For a cheap salsa, I could just mix that up. I could also add in some jalapeno if needed and maybe some onions and cilantro. I was also thinking about just getting a large can of tomatoes and making my own, which is how I sometimes do it. But then I spotted this product that was labeled as fire roasted tomato salsa. It was $1.18 for a large can, so it's a little more than I wanted to spend, but I was so intrigued by it that I really wanted to try it. I've just never noticed this in the tomato section before, so I'm gonna try this. I've had this recipe for cream cheese chicken taquitos on my bucket list for a while now, so I'm excited to finally get to see what this is like. For this, I'm gonna be using cream cheese, sour cream, green onions, sharp cheddar, and shredded chicken and I might use some salsa on the side. I'll post the recipe in the description area of my video but I'm cutting this recipe in half because I don't have anyone around that I can feed right now so you would be using six ounces of cream cheese. I'm using a small amount of the extra sharp cheddar because I want to save most of it to make another meal. I could either make cheese quesadillas one night or cheese enchiladas and I think that these will be plenty rich enough with the sour cream and the cream cheese. The salsa looks really good and it smells great. I'm excited to try this. I'm going to add just a little and mix everything together. After you mix it all together, I do suggest you taste it and see if it's to your liking. You could always add in some taco seasoning or more salsa if you wanted more intense flavor. I tried the salsa and I really liked it straight out of the can. It's not bad and I think it's a great money saving hack, especially for people that are living alone and don't necessarily want to buy a big jar of salsa.
these were so much better than regular chicken taquitos. My family really liked these. For my final meal, I'm making chicken bowls. I added paprika, garlic powder, salt and pepper to the chicken, and then cooked them in my George Foreman grill. I let this rest for about five minutes before cutting it up and I used half a breast per bowl. For the sauces, I served it with a chipotle sour cream and also with an Asian sesame sauce that I made. There were a few other dishes I wanted to make like these chimichangas, but I just ran out of time. However, you do have the ingredients for them and you also have ingredients for cheese enchiladas. I'll put a link to the video where I show you how to make cheese enchiladas. To make this kind of rice, you can either use tomato chicken bouillon or regular chicken bouillon and add it to the rice cooker when you're making your white rice. You could also serve Mexican street style chicken tacos and in that case, I would have served them along with refried beans and rice. I put a sample menu for you in the description area of my video. Anyhow friends, I hope you like this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon.